Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone can hear, you can hear. Uh, just blow your horn or throw your window down and we'll try and adjust a little bit. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, you won't be turning. I'll give you just a few minutes to be turning in your Bibles, but over in the book of Daniel this morning, I'll be reading out of the first chapter. Probably we'll read several verses this morning. Yunz, uh, really encourage you to pray this morning. Uh, told some of them earlier this morning that uh, just old self or uh, different trying to do a service like this. The old flesh, there's a lot of dread in it this morning, it seems like. No doubt the Lord can come by intervene this morning. So I desire very much an interest in your prayers this morning. I have, I, I'm sure each of you have got prayer requests this morning, but I, I want to mention a few before I do get started. Uh, let's continue to remember Jack and Eugene in our prayers. Terry and Pam is there doing a wonderful job, I know, in taking care of them, but let's, let's remember Jack and Eugene in our prayers this morning. Be very much in prayer for them. I've got a, a gentleman that we work with. Uh, been messaging back and forth with him the last few days. They had to take his wife by ambulance uh, a few nights ago. Uh, this man and his wife, they're not uh, much older than what I am. And uh, she has been very, very sick with this virus. That's that you remember them. Uh, Marvin and Carrie up here, Carrie's sister, Debbie. Uh, I know a lot of you know Debbie. Her husband, Barry, works up here at Duncan's. Barry is very sick. They've actually put Barry, Barry on a ventilator. I know a lot of you have probably seen last night where the carrier put the message out. But certainly remember them in your prayers this morning. Um, and I know there's a lot of others. I won't go on any further uh, mentioning names. But this morning, those, those three requests had really been upon our heart and on our mind. But I encourage you to, to pray for this service and to be very much in prayer for our loss still yet. Uh, thankful just a few uh, weeks ago, we got the phone call about little Addison. She called us up and told us that the Lord had saved her. And I want to give the Lord honor and glory for that this morning. Thankful that the uh, Lord's still in the saving business this morning. The Lord's still in the healing business this morning. We'll trust in Him. We'll take our, our thoughts and our prayers and that to Him and put our faith in Him this morning. There's nothing that my God can't do today. But over in the book of Daniel, if you want to turn there and you've got your Bibles with you this morning, I'm trying to do my very best this morning to, to be pleasing in that to the Lord. In the first verse in the first chapter, and I'll, like I said, I'll read several verses and I'll say this before I start reading, look over me. There's uh, some words in this that I know that I won't pronounce correctly, but you just read along with me and you look over that this morning. The first chapter in the first verse, in the third year of the reign of Jeho Jehokim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehokim, king of Judah, into his hand, which part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish but well favored, skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, and understanding of science, and such had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, in whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among them 
These were of the children of Judah, Daniel, and I, Mishael, and Azariah, and to whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Balthazar, and to Hanai of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azahar of Abednego. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should ye see your faces worse likening than the children which are of your sword? That then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, and I, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be upon them before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest still with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Malzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them hope. I'm going to leave off reading right there correctly read this morning. I may read those other few verses here in just a few minutes if the Lord leads us that way. But... Uh, Daniel here, uh, these that have came that uh, uh, from Judah. I, I, I've read this week, and you pray for me for just a few minutes this morning, but I, I've read this week uh, pretty well the whole entire book of, of Daniel there uh, uh, about the visions and everything that they had, uh, uh, that uh, Nebuchadnezzar and then his sons uh, uh, that followed him, uh, uh, about the visions, then the visions that Daniel had uh, uh, about these things. And uh, uh, what this was, was God was uh, uh, setting in place when he brought them out of Judah. Uh, uh, he was setting some things into motion and uh, uh, setting some things into place. And, uh, uh, like I said, this was a uh, uh, several year. Uh, I uh, went through, uh, uh, like I said, Nebuchadnezzar and uh, uh, then his sons. And as they would pass, uh, uh, another one would step up and be king in that time. Uh, uh, so uh, I guess and at the point that we had this morning, or, or what we want you to understand from that is uh, uh, that as time went on, uh, uh, this was over a great period of time. And that today, uh, I began to think about uh, how that these, uh, uh, when they were uh, uh, taken captive, when Nebuchadnezzar, came down to Judah and uh, I began to take them captive today uh, how that uh, uh, they uh, there was fear and there was trouble in their heart uh, uh, there was an unknown in their heart night today and, uh, uh, you pray for just a few minutes this morning uh, uh, that I can get myself uh, out of the way this morning and get where I need to be for just a few minutes uh, uh, but I thought about uh, uh, when I was a little boy uh, uh, that I was lost and I had an undone and I, I'll say this this morning. I, I didn't go for a great long period of time I, I really under conviction. I, I, but there was a time I, I, there that I wondered. I, I, but this morning I wondered I, I, what would happen to me when I die. And I want to take my time. And I, I want to try and explain that this morning if I can I, I, to you today. And I, I, you pray for uh, whoever the message might be for today. I, I, but these... I, uh, that they've come here, uh, uh, these uh, uh, men that they brought uh, uh, out of the land of Judah this morning. I, I thought about it like this. Uh, uh, old Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, he gave instruction uh, uh, to the eunuch down there. Uh, uh, he said, I want you to go and pick. Uh, and he gave instruction uh, as to who he was to pick uh, and to bring back his captives today. And I, I began to think about that. And I'm thankful that today uh, uh, that as a little six-year-old boy, 
today uh, that God uh, I give instruction and that today uh, to pick specifically me today. Uh, then the call went out that Sunday morning uh, that I was lost and uh, undone and headed uh, for a devil's hell. Uh, when I come to realize that day uh, that if I wasn't saved uh, that I would die and go to hell. Uh, the call went specifically uh, out to me that day. Uh, I didn't go out to uh, to my neighbor uh, or my friend and that today. Uh, but the call went directly uh, uh, to me that day. I began to think about these men. They were no doubt. They were scared and troubled. I've got some more thoughts that we'll try our very best to tie with this in a few minutes. But I'll just have to take my time in that today. They were scared and they were they were leaving their homes, uh, their family, and their uh, their way of life was just completely interrupted and uh, uh, completely done away with today. Uh, uh, much as we can relate to with the day and time that we're living in, uh, uh, the way of life that we uh, uh, have uh, grown accustomed to uh, uh, through this old virus and things that are going on uh, uh, has been completely uh, interrupted and changed about today uh, uh, and, and, and that today. Uh, uh, but I want you to understand something. Uh, uh, God's still in control. Uh, uh, God's still in charge today. Back when this all began, I preached you a message that God had a plan. God's still on the throne. God's still in charge today. God's still got that plan. Now, He didn't come. Now, uh, that's what I thought about when I uh, a few nights ago when I began to read. Uh, uh, we went downstairs there and uh, uh, we prayed a little bit before that we uh, uh, picked our Bible up. And I said, Lord, just show us some more uh, uh, to go to and to read. Uh, I've read and studied Daniel that before. And, uh, uh, I thought, well, well, why Daniel that today? Uh, uh, but I, I want to use uh, uh, these men that, that were brought back as captives. I want you to look at that today. God will help me. They came. I might be messing the video up for you folks at home that's watching. I'm going to move that table there. Get that obstacle out of my way this morning. Uh, they came there and they left their comforts and what they had known. Now they, I, I want you to think about this a minute. You prayed still yet today. I, this, is, this is different for me. They came and they were brought down here to Babylon, carried off as captives. Old Nebuchadnezzar, he tells his prince over the eunuchs there, he says, I want you to take them, I want you to feed them. I want you to nurture them. I want you to treat them very well today. I want you to take care of them. I, I, I want to, in three years' time, I want you to bring them before me. I want to sit down. I want to talk about them. I, I believe with all of my heart, David Kinesher, I, I, for whatever reason, he wanted to understand I, I, these people and their way of life in that today. But old Daniel, now you know the stories about about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The stories that's in the book of Daniel about them. Let me, let me tell that and I'll get back to this other part here in a minute. Kindly bring us up all together today. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, old Nebuchadnezzar, huh, I sent out a decree at one time and he said, uh, huh, uh, when you hear all these musical instruments uh, uh, being played, uh, uh, I want you to bow down and I want you to worship in that. Uh, uh, not the living God, uh, uh, but their gods down there in Babylon today. Uh, I want you to worship these things. And, uh, uh, these old boys, they just uh, uh, begin to think to themselves, uh, uh, we can't do that. Uh, uh, we can't go against God today. Uh, uh, we're going to have to stick uh, uh, to our God today. We're going to have to stick to the living God. Uh, uh, so they wouldn't bow down. You all know the story. They were people that went to the king and told them what had happened and what they were doing. They brought them down to the fiery furnace. No Nebuchadnezzar, he was just outraged when they told them their story. They heated the heated the furnace. I forget. I, I read it there just uh, uh, last night, I guess there, but he heated it so many more times. And I, uh, that today, uh, uh, the men that took them to throw them into the furnace, you know the story this morning, he consumed them. Uh, 
uh, and they went into the furnace. And, uh, old Nebuchadnezzar there, and she was there. And, uh, uh, he was watching what was happening. Uh, uh, he spoke to the men that was with him, to the guards, the soldiers that was there and around. Uh, and he said, how many uh, uh, did we cast into the furnace? Uh, he said, well, uh, uh, but there's four there now. Uh, uh, they're loose and walking around. Uh, and what has the likeness uh, uh, to the Son of God today? Uh, it was Jesus on the scene. Uh, uh, Jesus come by. Uh, uh, set them free that day. Jesus can do the same thing for you today. If you'll just let him. You'll just let to come into your life and you'll just hold your faith and keep your faith. Uh, you'll just keep your faith right real strong and hold to what you know is right today. And, uh, trust in Him today. Uh, uh, Jesus will come through and Jesus uh, uh, will see you through in that today. I believe that with all of my heart today. Uh, uh, they went, Nebuchadnezzar told them, uh, uh, call them out, uh, uh, bring them out of there. And uh, uh, they walked out in that today. Uh, uh, but the Bible says uh, uh, that they didn't even have uh, uh, the smell of smoke upon them. Uh, uh, their skin was untouched and hardened. Uh, uh, their hair wasn't singed or anything. Uh, uh, they were without blemish today. Uh, uh, that's the power uh, uh, that God can have today. If we'll just trust Him in our lives. I've thought about those three so many times. And I'm just being honest with you. Myself, I'd have probably, when I heard what they were going to do to me, I'd heard those little musical instruments. I'd have probably bowed down and acted like I was praying. And when I got home, I might have prayed to God. But, um, but I wouldn't want it to be thrown into that far. I'd have tried to figured out some way as they'll say it is to straddle the fence both ways but not them today. They told old Nebuchadnezzar before he threw them into the furnace. Now I'm just, this is in so many words here. This ain't just quoting word for word. They told them down there, they said we don't know what's going to happen to us and you throw us into that fire. Uh, they didn't know the answer that was before them. No doubt in their minds, John Gilead probably thought this is the end for us, but we're going all the way for God today. They probably thought in their minds, but this is the end for us. But it'll be all right. And they told Nebuchadnezzar, our God is, is, is on high, can do all things, and we're going to put our trust, we're going to put our faith in Him today. I don't know the answers. I don't have all the answers to all your questions today. You come and ask me, you say, well, preacher, we've been praying for so and low so for so many years. They're lost. I don't. I can't give you a timeline. And I think sitting down here at church, prayed for her for years. The lattice and back here in the car this morning, I know the last two or three years, ever since she's been coming here at church, they've been different ones of you that have prayed for that young and today. I don't know the time. I don't know as to when. Uh, uh, but I know this. And I, that's what I, I, I guess that uh, if we had a thought or if we had a, uh, a, a thought and that for today would be uh, trust in God. Uh, trust in God. Put your faith in Him today. Uh, put your faith in Him. Let me get back to them though when they were first brought down into Babylon. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he said, I want you to give them part of my meat, a ration, a portion. I want you to give them the same wine that I'm drinking, my household's drinking. I want you to take care of them. Feed them good, he said. Here again, he'd have been awful easy. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, boys, let's eat good. Uh, but I know what me and you'd have done. We'd sit down there and we'd eat old king's meat. Well, I can see Bud grinning there in the car. Uh, John Gully, we'd sit down and we'd eat old king's meat. We'd have took his wine. <laughs> we'd eat and we'd enjoyed it that today. <laughs> hey, but Daniel, he wanted to show him there. <laughs> he wanted to show him the power <laughs> that his God had today. <laughs> he wanted to show him what his God, <laughs> what my God <laughs> is capable of doing today. Oh, the old prince, he said, you bring us pulse water. 
you give us 10 days and you come back and you can examine us. Uh, they looked fine at 10, those 10 days. When that time came for them to go before the king, Scripture said, I read it to you, they were, they were plump, they were fat, they gained weight, they looked good, they were healthy. God seen them through it today. God's seen them through it today. Whatever's going on in your life today, God see you through it if you'll put your trust and your faith in Him today, people. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe that with Sister Shores. I stand before you today. I don't know how the outcome might get there. I don't know what you might have to go through to get to the end of it today. But believe you me today, God will see you through it. He'll walk every step of the way, just like that he did with the children of Israel there, with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He went all the way with them. Never forgot about them, where they were at. He knew just exactly down in Babylon where they were at. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, he was he like myself, or I guess I was like him some. He's pretty hard-headed, pretty slow to learn. God sent him them dreams, and he'd call out to Daniel. He'd call out to the magicians and the soothsayers. And all the, I'll just I'll sum it up like this, who he thought was the smart people, John Gully. He'd call them out, and he'd want them to come and give him advice. And them old boys, they'd have to... Every time they'd say, there's a little child of God down here in the camp. <laughs> Let's go get him. Let's go get Daniel. <laughs> Let's see what Daniel has to say about it. You know what? Today, uh, the old magicians and soothsayers, uh, uh, they seen real quick uh, uh, that they were something that Daniel had uh, uh, that they didn't have today. Daniel had God on his side. Uh, there's a lot of smart, intelligent people in this world today that ain't got God on their side. They're still looking for something. They're still looking for something today. Uh, uh, I'm not one of those smart, intelligent people, but I know who God is. Uh, and I know there's a little six-year-old boy when I bowed down that Sunday afternoon, and he reached down and he saved my soul. I know that whenever this world comes to an end, whether it's today, tomorrow, a year from now, a hundred years, or two thousand more years, I don't know today. Whenever that time comes on, whenever that old sky splits open, Christ steps out, gathers and calls the bride home today. I've got a place there. I've got a place in heaven. I was watching a video last night of a man preaching the gospel. I don't know the man's condition. He, he couldn't speak plain. He couldn't walk plain. He had some, some medical problems, no doubt. And just in listening to him preach, he apparently had been born this way. You, you, there'd be times he was, he'd get tied up his words and he couldn't get them out. And he'd have to stop. Then he'd be able to go again. He'd be able to tell them. I, I sat there. I got, got started watching that little video of that man preach. He got down into his message and he Lord began to set him free, John Gully. <laughs> Lord, come on the scene, bud. <laughs> his old tongue loosened up and you began, you could understand him a little quieter. <laughs> he said, I've got a promise of a home <laughs> that I'll go to one day <laughs> where that God will fix this old body. I've got that same promise. You're here in your sight this morning. You've got the same promise. You're not here. Conviction set up in your heart. You can bow your head down right where you're at today. Pray. Hopefully here, as time goes on, you'll be able to, be able to get together a little better. Each one of you, I want Addison's first chance we get to tell everybody, share her testimony We, Lisa called me, like I said, a couple of weeks ago. I just I pulled over on the side of the road. <laughs> I had church, but that's for a few minutes. I just sat there and the tears began to flow, John Gully, and I, I just I could feel the Spirit of God from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. But when I had her, when she was on the phone with me, I'll tell you this, I, Addison, I don't want to look your testimony up or your story, but I, I feel like sharing this this morning. 
Bless her, put her on the phone. I said, Addison, what happened this morning? She said, I was sitting here at home like the kids was having to do now, having to do a lot of their homework and stuff at home. She said, I was working on my homework. She said, I began to feel a pounding in my chest, my heart just running away. I said, Addison, what did you do? <laughs> but she said, I just closed that little old computer up and I got down the side of my bed and asked Jesus to save me in that today. <laughs> I mean, that's all that it takes today. <laughs> if conviction's set up in your heart, <laughs> it's to ask Jesus to save you any will today. It's that simple. Sandy, I try to complicate a lot of things. I try to make I make a mess out of a lot of things when I get involved. I get impatient on God and I want to see things happen on my time. I don't want to wait on God that today. God's got a perfect plan today. If we as his people will just follow it today. If we'll just follow it. Nathan sitting there in the car with Sandy and Jenny this morning. His job, I know Nathan can relate to this. I'd say Nathan reads blueprints each and every day. I'd say if you could see Nathan, he would agree with me. They's probably on a daily basis. He has to go and talk to different people. There'll be little things that'll be wrong with those plans that they'll have to change there in the field. God's plan ain't that way. God's plan ain't that way today. It's perfect. He got it right the first time when he laid it out for us. And then back in the beginning, it's still the right way and the right plan today. If we're listening trust and to him today. And we'll be willing to follow that plan. Well, David Kinezer, though, I'll say this, and I'm going to come to a close here in a few minutes. He'd have these dreams, these visions, and that's where I started to a while ago. Daniel, they'd go and they'd hunt Daniel up. Daniel would come, he'd sit down, and he'd talk to him. He'd pray and talk to God. Daniel, he'd just simply tell him what God had told him, showed him. Told him there one time, he said, He said, Nebuchadnezzar, you'll, just, you'll have to trust what God's showing you, what the vision means. God will show you. But he'd go and he'd have these visions. And God, whatever the instance would be, or what God would tell him, and that's exactly how that it would work out. That's exactly how that it would be. On Nebuchadnezzar, every time that God would, just like with the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they come out of that fire and he rejoiced and acknowledged that, that their God was the only God and that he was the true and living God. And I, I had a feast and he set them up as, as rulers and did all these things for them. Then you turn right over to the next chapter. Old Nebuchadnezzar is back in his cell. Uh, one place there in uh, I believe it's about the fourth or fifth chapter there. I'd have to go back and look uh, to make sure. Uh, uh, but said that he had went about a year. Uh, and he came walking back into the palace. Uh, and he began to say, look what I've done. Look what I've built. Look what I've accomplished. God began to deal with him again. Uh, God began to deal with him. Began to trouble his heart again. Uh, I told some of them again this morning. I, I told some a week or two ago. I was talking to some of you. Some, some may be here this morning. Out of all this that's went on, if nothing else, just come out of it. Lord's made me realize and see how that I've took being able to come to church for granted all my life. But uh, I've enjoyed it, but I've took it for granted. Uh, being able to come in and being able to sit and to worship and to fellowship with my fellow members. I can I can get to God. Uh, uh, that Monday that they called and uh, I talked to little Addison and she told me uh, and that, that she got saved. Uh, I rejoiced right there on the side of the road uh, uh, just as good as I could have at God's house that day. Uh, but I miss being with God's people. I miss fellowshipping with God's people. That's where we gain our strength at. Uh, that's where we gain our strength at today. 
I love you this morning out of the bottom of my heart. I'm going to come to a close in just a minute. I'm going to say this. And many of you, I know you're all in your cars. If you want to want to call or talk about it afterwards, but I'm just going to follow the Lord, and I'm going to tell you how that I feel this morning. Uh, with this with this going on, this virus still, our numbers in the state are coming down, but our numbers here in our home county are up. Why they been the highest that they've been since this all began. But for me, these are just my thoughts. Like I said, if you, if you want to do something differently, we'll do it. I'll try my very best to wear this headset next week. If you want to come, you sit in your car, you'll be able to pick this up. You'll be able to hear the message, the service that's going on. But anybody that would like to, we'll go on in the church. But now I do ask this out of you this morning. I ask that we sit with our families and that we space out every other bench. I ask that you wear your mask while that you're inside. I know that uh, I, I've just preached and tell you, and I believe with all my heart that God can take care of all things and everything, and that God's in charge. I believe that with all of my heart. But when I get in my car or my truck and I start to work in the morning, I'll put my seatbelt on. Missy, I don't have an intention of having an accident. And they, they statistics that show that, that there's still yet people that die wearing a seatbelt. But Sandy, I'm going to put my seatbelt on. I want the best chance that I've got to survive. So I'm saying that to say this this morning. I encourage you. And I, I think it's very, very needful. We come back in. Let's stay separated. Let's wear our masks. Let's try our very best. Now, I, I want to say this. If you get up on Sunday morning, you're not feeling well, come sit in your car or stay at home. We'll still continue to video. We'll still continue to post that on, on Facebook. You can, you can still watch that. But I want to say this this morning. You're not going to have COVID symptoms every Sunday morning. It just ain't going to work that way. Uh, old Satan will tell you on Sunday morning, you get up, I see Bud chuckling real big in there. Old Satan will tell you, boy, you got a headache, you better stay away. You can watch it. You can watch it this afternoon. They're going to post it online. Uh, if you feel bad, don't come. Um, but you ain't going to have symptoms every Sunday morning this morning. So I'm going to hush. I'm going to go dismissed with a word of prayer. I love you. It's out of the bottom of my heart, church. I really do. And I hope and trust that <coughs> the message today may be been a help to somebody, to someone. Let's remember all these requests that, that went out this morning. Messenger and different things. There's been some make some requests, so let's remember all those folks, those requests. Most of all, though, let's still let's be much in prayer for our lost. Let's remember, I, I, I preached to you a few weeks ago, and they they recorded it and put it on put it on our Facebook page. But I said in that message there, let's pray for our parents that have little ones in their homes. Let's pray for those grandparents that have little ones in their home and that they're around. Let's remember them. Uh, when that time comes and they come to them, they, they've got these questions and they, they want to know as to why they're feeling like they are. Let's pray for them to have strength to be able to answer it. Uh, if you'll trust in God today, you can. You can. I love you this morning. If you would, bow your head. Dear Lord, most kind and gracious and heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day and I thank you, dear Lord, for each and everything that you've done. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for helping me this morning, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for these that have come out this morning. Lord, I thank you for uh, each and every blessing that you've sent our way today, Lord. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you remember these requests, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you uh, uh, be with us today, Lord. And Lord, that you be with those that have uh, people and family and friends that are sick and afflicted with this virus today, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would uh, uh, just that they would be able to feel your love and your mercy around them today, Lord. I, I, Lord, that they would be able to know, Lord, that you're on the scene and you're there with them today, Lord. Lord, strengthen them today, Lord. I, Lord, we pray in that for our lost people today, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that don't know you in the free pardon of sin and that today, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that Lord, that you'll just, uh, Lord, that on your time, Lord, that they'll have the strength, Lord, and the courage, Lord, to, to call out upon you, Lord, ask you 
time to accept them into your heart, into your kingdom today, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you watch over everyone as they return to their homes. Watch over everyone as they go about their, their jobs and their different tasks this week, Lord. Be with them. Keep them safe today, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We love you. We're giving you honor and glory for your sweet and holy name. And amen. You have a message.